Well, it's another episode of your one-stop security program, Crime Watch. Our job on this program is to keep you abreast of top security stories that made headlines during the week. On our lineup this week, Hats, 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 the heart of a woman. Police okay. arrest man with human parts in Lagos. I personally kill them and make sure I drink their blood. Police arrest a kidnapper who also drinks the blood of his victims. Welcome to the program. I'm your anchor, Ivy Kano. Crime Watch begins now. The Nigerian Customs Service Kaduna Katsina Command has displayed its first seizure in the year 2018. Comptroller Kayodo Olumi Shere says the trailer was seized after days of surveillance and laying of ambush by his officers and men of the command in Katsina. Awal Ibrahim completes the story. While displaying its first seizures in the year 2018, the Kazuna Kaduna controller of customs stated that the goods seized comprises of a trailer loaded with bars of assorted used clothes, a J5 bus loaded with mosquito coils, and cars loaded with smuggled rice and vegetable oil. The trailer was seized after days of surveillance, following an ambush laid by officers and men of the command in Kazuna. Uh, some cars outside there, laden with rice, this pojo. We have uh, some J52 laden with uh, second clothing and rice and uh, mosquito, mosquito coil. Mosquito coil is even under absolute prohibition. We have we even have a trailer that it took what is called real intelligence to be able to pick it up. This is a a, a, a trailer that. We laid ambush for, for over three, four weeks. Because of that, nobody could travel. From April 2017 to date, riot smuggling activities have drastically reduced in Kasana due to the commitment of the Nigerian Customs Service in the state. The command laments the lack of cooperation by border communities who treat officials of the Customs Service like enemies. From people over here, it's a bit difficult. We hardly have cooperation because most people here uh, into this business. So cooperating with us is a difficult issue. We are seen as enemies. Anywhere you see any customer officer, we are seen as enemy anywhere you get to here. And that's why we're always very circumspect with whatever we say or whatever we The command is presently prosecuting six smugglers before a low court in an effort to bring smugglers in Kaduna and Kazana states to their news. The Undo State Police Command has paraded nine suspected criminals for various offenses like murder and cultism in the state. One of the suspects, a 40-year-old woman, Joy Oyelerin, was who connived with a gang of armed robbers to boggle the home of her mistress, a 95-year-old woman. Correspondent Ayodeji Murade has more in this report. It is a new year and on those states police command are starting it on a fruitful note with arrest of some suspects. Officials of this command arrest nine suspected criminals at different locations in the state. One of them was this 40-year-old housemaid. Joy Oyelenyi, a native of Undo town, connived with some criminals to rob her mistress, a 95-year-old woman. Joy with the support of our accomplices who are now at large parked property of the old woman's children from one of the apartments. Briefing reporters, the spokesperson of the state police command, Femi Joseph, said the stolen property were recovered from the woman's house in Ondo town. Oyelowo John, who is a native of uh, Akure, lives in the new town, Akure area, I came to report one. Uh, Joy, or you lying, the woman you, you saw there. This woman uh, was engaged as an house help to take care of the aged mother who is 95 years old. But unfortunately for this woman, he connived with armed robbery suspects and uh, they went and boggled 
the house of that man where he, he, he engaged her to take care of the mother. And they pack all these things, all these items that you saw here, everything that belonged to that woman, even the ones that belong to those that engage him to take care of the woman, she packed everything with the con uh, you know, conspiracy of all the uh, suspects. It's a, it's a lesson <coughs> to, to our people to always know who to engage to take care of their aged ones. This woman you saw here could as well organize to kidnap this uh, aged woman and that would be a problem for the family. So if you want to do also paraded are still suspected court members and two murder suspects. The police image maker gave insight into how the suspects were now. They are suspected courtes. One of them too is a suspected murderer, the one that murdered a victim at Okakoko. We have arrested him and we have also arrested uh, some, uh, some, you know, some courtes who engage uh, uh, in a brawl and injured themselves. You, you could see the, uh, you know, all the items that we recovered from them. But a man, uh, sometimes ago in uh, Okakoko, was the person that uh, he murdered. The man, the, a very young uh, man, that uh, uh, there, there was this brawl, a little brawl uh, between them, only for him to to just hack him down. So they said the suspect will soon be arraigned and sounded a note of warning to criminally minded persons to either turn a new leaf or be ready to face the wrath of the law. The reign of Don Wani finally came to an end after what could best be described as Rivers New Year bloodbath where many were killed by a group said to be led by Don Wani. Well, the security agent saw that singular act as an affront and they went after him. After many years of terrorizing residents of River State, suspected cultist, kidnapper and mass murderer Don Wani has finally paid the ultimate price for his alleged crimes. Just recently in November 2017, the Nigerian army carried out a raid on his operational base in Omoku community of Ogba Igbema in Doni local government area. During that operation, assorted weapons, dynamites, military uniforms and decomposing human body parts were amongst shocking discoveries that were made. The army says it was in reaction to this that the late Don Wani planned and executed the New Year Day's massacre in Omoku, which led to the death of 16 persons. But that was to be his last attack. Intense surveillance led operatives of the DSS and the army to his hideout and apartment in Enugu State. Unable to withstand the superior firepower of the security operatives, Don Wani was killed alongside his second-in-command and another gang member. Their corpses were then transported to Port Harcourt and handed over to the River State Police Command. They were f formerly hiding out in Imo State. We traced them down to Enugu, where they rented an apartment, lived with uh, other uh, people in the neighborhood, like normal people. And from there, they were already planning another mayhem in Omok. So... We moved from here, we collaborated with uh, the General Officer Commanding 82 Division in Enugu and we were able to raid that uh, his hideout in Enugu and um, in the process he was running away and uh, we did, our troops shot at them and these are the criminals you can see. So this is exactly what how we were able to achieve this feat. Um, I want to also uh, I want to mention the fact that uh, Don Wani, of course, the leader of the criminal Modros gang, is the, was the masterminder of that first January massacre in Omok. But that, Omo, that operation was physically led by Ikechuku, his number two, who is here right now. He's among those here now. Ikechuku physically led that operation. And there is another uh, person whom I don't want to mention that led that operation with him. And we will not rest 
until we get all of them and bring them to book. I want everybody to understand that crime does not pay, no matter what. Um, the, the long arms of the law will catch up with you. You can now see a typical example. They are running, they think uh, uh, they are above the law, but look at it now. While security agencies in river states celebrate this success, they are mindful of the fact that there are still many other unrepentant criminals like Don Wani out there. They therefore want members of the public to continuously support the fight against crime by providing information that can lead to the arrest of other criminal elements terrorizing the state. <laughs>Thanks, Uchi. Not done after Don Wani's death, police went hunting for his boys and one of his top gang members couldn't hide for too long. I followed them during the killing. Uh, so it's the start of judgment for this man. You can see that you were when the person Desmond Okotobu was a member of the dreaded gang led by Donwani, who was gone down alongside some of his lieutenants days after the Omoku killing by the gang on January the 1st. The suspects who had known the gang leader since 2015 discloses that 15 members carried out the attack in the early hours of the new year. We follow Donwani. He get group when Donwani, they give gun to shoot. Called the rest call. Those who rest call, they're from Imo State and River State. Now, them they shoot and kill. And I know them when shoot that thing and kill people. I know all of them. And in that party, I know many people when belong for the party. I know all of them. The suspects went further to mention the names of some of those who took part in the attack. MLK. Mm -hmm. Abola. Ian Tuga and they throw away Oruchupu and that Domani and the number two and the Boski and the Chikezia and the Mighty and the Vananga. He says Donwani ordered the attack in retaliation for his mother's arrest and the ransacking of his home by vigilantes. Donwani gets problem with the vigilant, so vigilant group. So they catch a mother. So as they catch a mother and they come spoiling a house. So that's why the money come back and do that thing. I say how are you? What do you do? You come and keep people for more. The suspect denies bearing arms during the operation and pledged to support the police to bring other gang members to book. The New Year attack resulted in the death of at least 15 persons mostly those returning from a church service. From that story, we tell you this. Taraba State Whips as headsmen attack leaves 21 dead and many others missing. Residents of Donado, Lavoro, Katibo, Dingdago and Maku communities in Taraba State are grieving and counting their losses after their communities were sacked by suspected Fulani militia. During the coordinated attacks that lasted two days, houses were raised and about 35 people are still missing. Some relatives of the victims who spoke with our correspondent narrated their ordeals, lamenting that security agents could not be mobilized to their area during the two days the Fulani militia laid siege on their communities. It is just a very sad thing and things that we didn't even expect it and experience in life. As a pastor, I have buried 21 people of our community, which it is very painful. And many people have run away and their food and all their properties have been burned down. For Katibu, Laboro, there's no single life there. You, 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 you won't find shelter because 90% of the properties there have been destroyed. So you won't find shelter. So there's no need. So when we say whether 
we are, there's a fear about being attacked again. You can only go and burn the remaining trees and uh, uh, shrubs there. There's nothing left for you to destroy. So the person who is already falling is not afraid to fall, to fall again. They have since vacated the ancestral homes for fear of further attacks. Some of them relocated to the IDP camps in the state capital. When TVC News visited the IDP camps in Jalingo, the victim said the ancestral homes have become unsafe for habitation since Fulani Edsmen still lurk around. They called on the federal government to come to their aid. We are here, we now get food for this place. Then we don't want to go back to our village because Fulani people there for our village. We want their government so that they will help us with food. We cannot go back, if we go back, they will kill us. The Taraba State Police commanders urge residents of the affected communities to return home, assuring them of protection. Image maker of the command said more policemen had been deployed to the troubled communities to safeguard them against attacks. We are not relenting our effort. The commissioner of police is quite aware. He has been getting information from the people on ground and is equally sending more men. It disagreed with the notion that the Fulani headsmen carried out the heinous crime, maintaining that unidentified gunmen attacked the communities. Well, the truth remains that when somebody carries out an attack, the police at the moment of the attack are not on ground. We rely on the people of the community. It's not just enough somebody to say that this, that these are the group of people who attacked us. But they should be able to give us facts and possibly tell us who are those people responsible. Then we go after them as I kept on saying. Event watchers faulted security agents in ability to take preventive measures against recent attacks in the state, as they recall that Governor Dairo Sishako had earlier raised the alarm of impending attack by headsmen in some communities in the state. Well, if you think that was sad, then our next story where 73 persons were slaughtered in Benue State will leave you in a state of shock. Seventy-three caskets mounted on six articulated trucks and three ambulances begin the final journey from the morgue of the Benue State University Teaching Hospital. They contain the remains of victims of recent killings by evading herdsmen militia in parts of Benue State. Flags fly at half-mast in honor of them, and the day is declared walk-free by the state government. People turn out in large numbers on the streets and slowly make their way to the venue of a memorial service in honor of the dead. A burial mass takes place at the IDB Square in Makodi, where leaders take turns in declaring that enough is enough and Benway people will no longer take the attacks on them lying low. A mass burial takes place immediately afterwards at a burial site specially prepared on the outskirts of Makodi. It is personally supervised by the governor amid palpable grief among people gathered to witness the final rites. Now, there aren't enough words to describe what we just saw. But moving on, police parade a kidnapper who also drinks the blood of his victims. Ibrahim Umar is the 20-year-old leader of a kidnap for ransom gang, whom the police describe as the most vicious gang in recent times. He and his gang were, among others, apprehended by the police in their hideout in the bushes along the Abuja Kaduna Highway days after the Christmas. Showcasing before you today some of the achievements recorded by the Nigerian police force in the area of fighting and prevention of violent crimes such as kidnapping, armed robbery, cattle rustling, and the like. Uh, it is important to us underscore that the Inspector General of Police, IDP Brian Putu Idris MNI, 
uh, rule out security arrangement uh, for the Christmas festivity and the New Year celebration. And this uh, arrangement has been yielding positive results because across the country, Christmas and the New Year celebration was celebrated in peace. Uh, we have uh, successes recorded in arresting, especially those who we are parading today, uh, those criminal elements, uh, those kidnappers, vicious kidnapping for ransom gang, who lay ambush for people returning from Christmas uh, holiday. Uh, three victims were rescued from them. Like the proverbial vampire, Umar, also known as Oro, confessed to sucking the blood of his victims after killing them, particularly when ransom is not paid. I have killed at least 10 persons. I don't spend my victims. Anyone who dares me, I kill them. And, and if they fail to pay ransom for any of my victims, I personally kill them and make sure I drink their blood. All my gang members are loyal to me. No one dares question my authority. We are all in the bush. With glee, Umar and his lieutenant showcased their dexterity in stripping and assembling rifles. <laughs> he and his gang fabricated this rifle locally. One of their victims, who was surprisingly released, narrates his ordeal. He asked us to conceal his identity. They kidnapped my elder brother and demanded a ransom of 5 million naira. I told them I did not have such amount of money, so we negotiated and agreed for 350,000. They told me how to get the money down to them in the bush. When I got there, Omar carried me on a motorcycle, and after an encounter with other gang member, he told me I had been kidnapped. He collected the, the, the 350,000 naira, but did not release my brother, and demanded 5 million naira to secure my own freedom. I pleaded with him, and miraculously, he released me. Umar confessed that there are many gangs operating in the bushes from Abuja to Kaduna. Their stock in trade range from armed robbery to kidnapping. The police say the suspects will be charged to court. Lagos CP arrests a man with human parts in the Alakoko area of the state. The police have arrested an Islamic cleric, Kayode Abdul Fatai, in a Lakuko area of Lagos State for being in possession of human parts. Spokesman for Lagos Police Command, GK Oti, said the arrest was made following a tip off and investigation by officers of the command. Female uh, uh, vagina, then EKG. Uh, of course, heart, heart will be the, the heart of a woman. Okay, I'm taking. Ito, that's the lap of a human being. Okay, so Baba and Loni, Kelo, Waba. Kill a man, kill a man, fish. Okay, if I fish rituals, okay, nobody is fine. One, MJ, I'm Jimmy. Tabalo, she has abandoned. Lagos Police Commissioner Edgar Imoimi has urged members of the public to be cautious of activities of people living in their vicinity. We are in um, Moshut, Badabu area of Alakuko. Now, this is another dividend of uh, community policing and safety partnership where people have confidence, trust in the police, and come forward with reports. It was based on a report to Alakuko Division uh, that uh, this uh, Alpha, who calls himself uh, Alpha 
uh, Abdul Fatai Kayode. Uh, his house was searched, and uh, different human parts. He has made us understand that uh, the parts that uh, the human parts that are in that uh, 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 paint bucket uh, range from uh, female uh, uh, private parts to uh, female hearts. Uh, and the laps of uh, of a female. Uh, they are all female uh, female parts. And that uh, an alpha uh, who has a house close by here, they are in partnership. They intend to use it for money rituals. Uh, as I speak to you, uh, I have instructed uh, the DPO to place. Uh, Plain close surveillance in the house of the Alpha. Uh, I'm waiting to get word from our surveillance team that uh, he has returned back home. As at now, uh, we hear that he is um, he is uh, not at home. Uh, so uh, he too will be arrested, uh, and of course, we will ensure that uh, justice is done uh, in this case. Lagosians, please know your neighbors and know what they do for a living. If you have a neighbor behaving suspiciously, coming in at odd times, carrying about bags in questionable manners, please notify the police immediately. Obviously, for him to have gotten all these parts, or for them to have gotten all these parts, they must have murdered somebody. So we intend to get to the bottom of this. But one thing is clear. Community policing and safety partnership is working in Lagos. And I encourage Lagosians to keep the information flowing. Remember today to make an effort to know your neighbor and what he or she does for a living. Keep a date with us next week, same station. Till then, keep your comments coming to Crime Watch at tvcnews.tv. I'm Ivy Kano.